Hello everyone, I am Divya Jamloki, a homeopathic intern from UA University and today in this video we are going to study about angina pectoris. What do you mean by angina pectoris? What do you understand by this term? Angina pectoris is a discomfort which is felt in the chest due to myocardial ischemia and never due to myocardial infarction. Remember my words, it is myocardial ischemia and not the myocardial infarction. Angina pectoris, when we are studying this topic, first we have to know about what is ischemic heart disease. Ischemic heart disease is a condition which is arising due to imbalance between the oxygen supply to the myocardium an oxygen demand by the myocardium. Demand of oxygen by the myocardium increases and oxygen supply decreases which creates an imbalance and finally it leads to ischemia of the heart muscles. Ischemic heart disease includes acute coronary syndrome and chronic angina. Acute coronary syndrome includes unstable angina, chronic angina includes chronic stable angina and prince metal angina. One more thing I want to mention here that acute coronary syndrome also includes ST elevation MI and non-ST elevation MI. But what we are studying in this topic is angina pectoris and as I've mentioned before that angina pectoris occurs due to myocardial ischemia. There is no evidence of myocardial infarction in this case. So we are not going to study in this video about ST elevation MI and non-ST elevation MI. So there are three types of angina, unstable angina, chronic stable angina and prince metal angina. How are we going to differentiate between these three types of angina? Prince metal angina occurs due to the vasospasm of the epicardial vessels whereas unstable angina and chronic stable angina occurs due to the formation of atherosclerotic plaque in the major epicardial vessels. So what are those major epicardial vessels which are playing a very major role in these angina? The three major epicardial vessels are right coronary artery, left anterior descending artery and left circumflex artery. Left anterior descending artery and left circumflex artery are the branches of left coronary artery. So if you have remembered the things which I have mentioned right now, these three arteries, then very, very good. And if you are not remembering this, just once go through your anatomy book and revise the major epicardial vessels which are supplying your heart. Also learn the branches which are coming off from the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. It will really help you in studying myocardial infarction also. Now the second thing which I am going to discuss here is Prince Metal Angina. So this Prince Metal Angina, you will not find these cases very frequently in your OPTs and IPTs. Mostly you will find the case of myocardial infarction, ST elevation MI, chronic stable angina, unstable angina. But Prince Metal Angina is something which uh, you are not going to find frequently in your OPTs and IPTs. Prince Metal Angina occurs very rarely and as I've mentioned before that it is always due to the vasospasm of the epicardial vessels. It is not due to the formation of atherosclerotic plaque. So whenever patient will go for coronary angiograms, there will be clean coronaries. Clean coronaries. Why? Because there is no atherosclerotic plaque in these cases. Chest pain will be fine at rest. Patient will experience chest pain at rest. One more important thing I want to 
mention here right now is that chess pain occurs at midnight patient usually feels this pain at night uh, till 8 am um, patient experiences the chest pain and the major risk factor behind prince metal angina is smoking one more risk factor is hyperventilation but the major one is smoking and whenever an ecg is performed um you may find perfectly normal ecg in these cases sometimes you can find transient elevation of the st remember this is non progressive not at all progressive st changes you can see in this uh, prince metal angina there will be non progressive st change and only transient elevation of st you will find in these cases now if i talk about chronic stable angina and unstable angina what is the difference between chronic stable angina and unstable angina we are going to learn further but how will we differentiate it from prince metal angina is the fact that chronic stable angina and unstable angina always occur due to the formation of atherosclerotic plaque in the epicardial vessel whereas prince metal angina always occur due to the vasospasm of the major epicardial vessel in chronic stable angina the plaque is stable whereas in unstable angina the plaque is unstable there is no rupture of plaque in the case of chronic stable angina plaque will rupture in the case of unstable angina there will be thrombosis formation but remember it that there will be no infarct whereas when you will study about st elevation mi non st elevation mi there is formation of infarct in those cases and therefore we say the myocardial infarction st elevation myocardial infarction and non st elevation myocardial infarction okay so no infarct formation in the case of chronic stable angina beside there is a rupture in unstable angina but there is no infarct formation in these cases so whenever infarct is not forming what you will find that troponin levels will be perfectly normal in the case of chronic stable angina and in the case of unstable angina whenever an ecg will be performed ecg there will be baseline changes otherwise you can find perfectly normal ecg and in the unstable angina either you will find progressive st changes or you will find perfectly normal ecg talking about the clinical features first thing i want to say that whenever patient of chronic stable angina comes to you he will say that he is experiencing this kind of pain since last two months so this is a chronic chest pain but if i talk about unstable angina this is a new onset chest pain which is totally unpredictable comparing with the chronic stable angina this is a predictable pain unstable angina the pain increases in severity what we will say crescendo okay but here the same amount of pain is occurring every time okay chronic stable angina the pain will be relieved by rest but the pain will be increased the pain will be uh, happening in the time of exertion but here the pain occurs at the time of rest okay chronic stable angina pain will be relieved by the nitroglycerides but in unstable angina there is no relief from nitroglyceride pain will occur for less than 10 to 20 minutes however pain will occur for more than 20 minutes so this is the basic difference between chronic stable angina and unstable angina i hope i have covered the major point in this short video 
and if you are liking this content please like share and subscribe khan's academy and let me know your reviews in the comments thank you